Welcome to the Philadelphia Money Show. I'm John Dobas from Forbes. You don't need to know who this is, but I'll tell you anyway, Ken Fisher. You've seen his face definitely if you have anything to do with financial television or uh, magazines or online. Ken, good to see you again. Great to see you, John. It's been a while. I recall about eight years ago you were, when you were a columnist. By the way, Ken was the longest running columnist in Forbes magazine, having written every issue from 1984, July, until 2017. Uh, so quite, quite a run there, Ken. Uh, but Ken came to town one time. I was an editor working on uh, the, the investment columnists. You're, you were about 800 words. You needed to be 750. I took some reference to poutine out because you were writing about Canada. And you took umbrage. And I thought Ken was coming to town to kick my ass, but you bought me coffee. I. I take, nice I take umbrage regularly. I'm, 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 You're an umbrage I'm, taker. I'm, I'm an easy umbrage taker. But uh, anyway, he's, he's a good man. I, I, can, I can vouch for his character. Anyway, people, people know that you hate annuities from your commercials. They know that you can do better. But it, it, give me the encapsulation of what your strategy is for investing in stocks. So most people uh, that invest have a longer time horizon than they think they have because people live longer and they have other purposes for their money. And the longer the time horizon that somebody has for the usage of their money, the more likely it is that they need higher equity exposure. That all varies by individual circumstance, but the longer your time horizon, the more likely you need higher equity exposure. If you need equity exposure at all to the extent you do, because stocks go up more in the time than they go down, you should be bullish unless you have a good reason to be bearish. Most people tend to be bearish unless they can see a good reason to be What's bullish. What's a good reason is, to be bearish? So, as John Templeton famously said, bull markets are born on pessimism, grow on skepticism, mature on optimism, and die on euphoria. And that's always true except for when it's not. And when it's not is when you've got a big bad thing that's not been priced, so it surprises and it's big enough to take the global economy and turn it into a recession. And it crawls so, out of the sewer. And yeah. see it so in an $87 trillion economy, that takes something that's in the size of $4 trillion. Bucks. It's big, it's not little. So you're looking for those two things. And if you can't find one of those that everybody else hasn't pre-priced, you ought to be bullish. So most of the time, I'm bullish. And when I'm bullish, I'm always thinking it's a global stock market. I'm thinking global top down. So if you look at the world we're in today, we're in a world where tech's doing really well as leading the market. If you look at the world we're in today, if you take tech out of the U.S. market, because tech is mostly a U.S. phenomenon, there's very little tech on a cap-weighted basis outside of America. True. Or things that act like tech that aren't in the tech sector, like Amazon and consumer discretionary, or uh, some of the Netflix-type things that are in, are in yeah. the uh, internet and communication services area um, that aren't considered tech. When you look at those, that's all American, mostly. There's very little. If you take that out and you compare U.S. to uh, non-U.S., the returns are very similar. Right. The rest of the return, the rest of America's return is very similar to the rest of Europe's overall. So then you shop around more outside of America because you have to be overweight to tech. If you're overweight to tech or even underweight to tech, that's America relative to the world. So you look around. And, and that, this is just the way I think, which is top-down global, okay. and then parse down lower, and then get to stock picking as the last step. Which you have excelled in over the years as well. I mean, the price-to-sales ratio is something that you popularized uh, 30 years ago, I believe, in a book, right? Uh, Longer 30, than that 35 now. 35 years, maybe? Yep. Uh, un, yep. uh, uh, I was going to say uncommon Thir stocks. 35. 35. There. Super so, stocks. So, so the reality when I was a Forbes columnist is I had this really lucky history of having my stock picks work out well, which is part of the reason that I survived in Forbes so long, because uh, uh, when, uh, you remember Laurie Menard? Sure. Uh, when Laurie uh, was there, he started this process that uh, had never been done before, where they graded and measured all the columnist stock picks every year. Yes, they put a report card. And put out the report card, and, and, the report card and my report card turned out pretty good most of the time, and I had a very lucky history there. And that's kind of the stock picking part. But the stock picking part comes after the part right. where you purposely said first, what kind of countries do I want to be in? What kind of sectors do I want to be in? Do I want to be more in this kind of sector, in this part of the world, more in that kind of sector, in that part of the world? And that leads you down to a, that's kind of like a way to sift through the haystack I got to you. get to where, what parts of the haystack might have the best needles and then you start looking which, for the needles. Uh, which themselves. barns and which silos have the best stuff and then you go looking for the right grain. Yeah, so like you'd look at tech in America, you wouldn't look at tech much overseas. You'd look at 
right now energy overseas, not in America, Why particularly is that? Europe. Uh, because the technologies that were in America that have been priced before in America, ah, tied to fracking and all that have stuff, not have, been uh, are rippling out now, Good bringing point. down costs there and improving margins there. Um, and, and so you, you kind of parse the world into the parts, look for the categories. It's like parsing the haystack so you don't have to go through as much of the hay to get to the needles, and then you focus on the needles. Need, need, needles after dealing with some of the hay. Down on the farm investing with Ken Fisher. There we go. Thank you, John. Thank you, Ken.